Hi, my name's Ryan and I work as a GSMR Network Management Technician in Stoke NMC for Network Rail Telecoms. And in this brief video today, we're going to be discussing the GSMR system and why it's important. So, what is GSMR? Well, first it'd be helpful to know what it stands for. GSMR is the Global Systems for Mobile Communication on the Railway. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a mobile network on the railway. It encompasses the combined resources of technology, processes, and people to deliver secure and reliable driver to signal communications. It improves safety, performance, and passenger experience, as well as providing the foundation for a sustainable, modern, digitally enabled railway with lower running costs and increased capacity. The GSMR network is made up of various technologies. Let's start by looking at the cab radio. These are found in every single driving cab and allow the driver to speak to signalers and stations. They have the ability to call the nearest signaler, to send preset text messages, to contact passengers via the public address system, or to send railway emergency calls to all trains and signalers in the area. Next is the base transceiver station, or BTS. These are the radio masts you'd see if you look out the window during a train journey. Network Rail has 2,500 of these masts spread out at regular intervals across the country. They provide the radio coverage for the cab radios and other users of the GSMR network. With the help of repeaters, this includes tunnels, hill cuttings and stations. The next technology is repeaters. Now these receive a signal transmitted by the preceding BTS and amplify that signal in a location that isn't suitable for a BTS. As I previously mentioned, a good example of this would be tunnels. It wouldn't be suitable to build a whole radio mast inside a tunnel, so this signal is received by the repeater and pushed through the tunnel to the BTS on the other side. Next up, we have the Base Station Controller, or BSC. Now, as I mentioned before, we have 2,500 BTSs around the country. We only have 10 BSCs. These control all of the BTSs within a certain geographical area. It provides the interface between the cell sites of the BTS and the brain of the GSMR network, the MSC. Next is the Mobile Switching Center, or MSC. Now, this is the central call routing switch that connects and links together all of the BSCs. The MSC will confirm the user is authorized to use the system and connects the call between people using the GSMR network. It also receives information from signaling systems to provide accurate train location data. It helps ensure calls are routed to the correct driver, signaler or controller. This is based in DIGCOM. Finally, we have the fixed terminal, also known as the GSMR terminal. These have three main users the route control manager, the electrical control operator, but most commonly, signalers. These are connected to the MSE via the fixed transmission network, or FTN. These are what allow calls and text messaging between the operator and the cab radio. They feature a push to talk button, a handset, a loudspeaker, and a touchscreen display. They can allow the operator of the terminal to see all registered users within that operator's area of control. So let's take a look at an example of a call. The driver of a train needs to contact the nearest signaler. He hits the call signaler button on his cab radio. This call travels through the air via radio waves and is received by the closest BTS. It's then converted from an analog signal to a digital signal. This will be covered at a later date. That digital signal is then sent down the FTN to the BSC in control of that geographical area. From that BSC, the call then travels further down the FTN to the MSC in Digcot. Here, signaling data is used to determine the accurate route for the call, which is then sent back via the FTN to the correct signaler that the driver needed to speak to. This whole process happens in less than one second. The GSMR network has several processes that it supports. I'm going to go through a few of these now. The first one that happens at the start of most train journeys, or should do, 
is registration. This is where the driver inputs his journey details into the cab radio. This enables the GSMR system to track the train's position and allows the signaler to see the driver's head code. Next are operational messages. These are short preset text messages that can be sent between the driver and signaler. For example, the driver could be standing at a stop signal and he can send a message standing at signal to the signaler and await confirmation whether he can move forward or not. The response to this would be the signaler potentially sending call signaler to the driver of the train, getting him to contact. The way the driver can contact the signaler is through the call signaler button located on his cab radio. This enables a point-to-point -point contact between the driver and the signaler in charge of the geographical area that he's in. The fourth process is caution acknowledgement. Let's say there's been an incident on the track. The signaler in charge of that area can set up a pre-set text message that will be received by any trains entering the geographical region of the incident. The driver of the train will receive that when he enters the area. He can then acknowledge that he's received that message on his cab radio so the signaler knows that the driver is aware. The fifth process is an urgent call. This is a point-to-point -point call the driver will make to the signaler when there is immediate danger to his train but only his train. This call will take priority of any other calls of a lower priority being made to the signaler in the geographical area. That signaler's call will end and the driver will be put through. The sixth process is a REC call or Railway Emergency Call. This is when there's grave and immediate danger to all trains in an area. The driver will be put through to the main signaler in charge of the area will also contact route control, the adjacent signalers, and all trains in the predefined area. So that's what GSMR can do. But why do we need it? Why was it implemented? Well, the first reason is safety. The GSMR network follows recommendations set following major incident inquiries in the past. It provides that direct driver to signaler communication even in remote areas via repeaters, which wasn't previously possible on the old communications network. The second reason is cost, which is always important. GSMR reduces the significantly increasing costs generated in sustaining the patchwork of increasingly inefficient legacy networks. It improves the reliability of railway communications as well as providing that foundation the digitally enabled railway, which will be the future. The third reason the GSMR network was created was because of Ofcom's regulations. When they were put in place, they withdrew the analog signals that were used on the previous communications network from use, which is the national radio network. This and the European standards set in place were the driving force behind the creation of the GSMR network. So let's take a more in-depth look at the benefits of GSMR. The main benefit is obviously safety. There's reduced trackside maintenance because the systems can be remotely managed. Previously, drivers would have had to leave the cab of the train to make a call to a signaler from an SPT or signal post telephone. With the in-cab radio, they effectively don't have to do this anymore, which is greatly reduced risks. The main reason though is the wreck calls. This allows everyone in the area and people controlling the area to be made aware of an incident. Not only does this prevent follow-on incidents, but it also drastically increases the speed at which the incident can be resolved. A second benefit is improved performance. We have better diagnostic tools than before. GSMR allows an understanding of what causes a train delay, and as a result, we can put in place a direct and appropriate response to prevent those delays from happening again. We've also got 100% coverage across the country, which allows us to determine if there's a gap in coverage somewhere and take a response to fix that. Drivers acknowledging cautions put in place by signalers should also theoretically lead to a 30% reduction in train delay. The third benefit of GSMR looks more towards the future. We have a reduction in operating costs from removing those legacy networks that we're currently having to maintain. GSMR also provides the foundation 
for the European Rail Traffic Management System, or ERTMS. This will eventually replace the traditional signalling system that we currently have in place. A fourth benefit is passenger experience. The introduction of driver-to-signaller communications allows more accurate and up-to-date information to be given to passengers. And as previously mentioned, there'll be a reduction in train delay, which is a win-win-win for network rail, the train operating companies, and of course, passengers. So that was an overview of the GSMR network. Let's take a quick look at a summary of what we've covered. Network rail has 4,056 trains, each of which has a cab radio in every single driving cab. There are 2,500 BTS radio masts spread out at regular intervals across the country. These are controlled by 10 BSCs, which control specific geographical areas. These BSCs are controlled by the Mobile Switching Centre, which is based down in Didcot, although there is a backup in Stoke if something were to happen to the Didcot branch. The GSMR network was a £1.86 billion investment that allows us to have 100% radio coverage across 15,000 kilometres of track. It reduces the operating cost for network rail, it improves performance and reduces train delay, and it sets the foundation for ERTMS, the future of digital railway. Thank you very much for watching the video. There will be more to come focused on more specific areas of the GSMR network.